You were already retired by the time Chinks got killed. Yes. And I think you said that that's a case that's not going to be solved? That's a very, very tough case. Why? Uh, I told the police department back then when, they, they, when he first got shot that that case was going to be difficult because it, it, you know, it's involved all the tangibles, other people. And they have to, in the hip-hop community, when things happen sometimes, people clam up. People don't talk. Things don't get said right away. So you have to know how to navigate within this community to get things done. And because Chinks got shot in the location he got shot at, it wasn't that there were many people around and the camera systems were really out in the way when you know this thing occurred with him. So, and then like you said, people didn't come forward and say, hey look, this is what happened. I believe Chinks got set up. There's no doubt about that. You think Chinks got set up yes. to get murdered? Yes. From to where he was shot at and the people that were with him in the car and how the other car would happen to somebody who was waiting for him and, they, and they, they followed him and they saw where he was going and they got him. Right, and then I think Coke Boy Yemen was in the car with him. Right. He got shot yeah, he as got well. Shot. Right. But I assume he didn't cooperate. And the people definitely wanted to shoot him because all the shots were on the driver's side of his door. From what I remember, he had like several shots. Who, Yemen or Chinks? Chinks on the side of where he was at. There were several shots fired, I think, for what I know, the investigation, there was a bunch of shots that were shot into the door, the side he was sitting at, or the passenger side. So you think that the Chinks case was an assassination? Yeah, definitely. But you don't think it'll, it'll ever get solved? I'm not going to say it won't. I'm just saying it may take a little time. Uh, it may not. There's a chance that it may not get solved, but I'm hoping that it does. I mean, I've tried to, to you know, to do the best I can, the guy to the PD and what I knew, hopefully they run with it. Or I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the NYPD has a lot of evidence that they're looking at, but uh, they probably can't move forward just yet on yeah, it. Nobody's been charged from what I've heard. No, and these cases are tough. I told you as before, you have to know how to, to really navigate between them. Okay. From your professional opinion, when you look at the Suge Knight murder case that's happening right now, when he. Uh, Ended up running over. Oh, running over the, the guy in the, in the movie guys, set, yeah. yeah. And they ended up killing one of them. Do you think Sugar will get off? No. Definitely not. Why? Uh, I think that by him running the guy over, it was intentional. You know? Well, him running over Bone was intentional. Right. Him killing Terry, probably not. That's hard to say. I mean, you're going to ask what kind of, um, what he's going to be charged with. Either he's going to be charged with vehicular manslaughter or vehicular homicide, you know, or, uh, yeah, it might be that. It may not be murder. He ran over Bone because he was getting beat up by Bone. Right. We, we've established that. And then he ran over Terry and killed Terry. So you're saying that he might have ran him over accidentally? Well, he came Because he was fleeing from, the, from... He came with Terry. Terry right. was, it was established that they were friends. Right. Now I remember. Right. So you come with your friend... You end up running over one guy who's beating you up and then killing your friend. He may not get charged with that. He, he may not. Or he may get hit with an accidental, you know, uh, a manslaughter. Is that a felony? Involuntary. No, yeah, it's a felony. He and, might get hit with that. And he already has two strikes. So. And you remember, you're right. He's got two strikes. And remember, the police department wanted to get him anyway. They were looking to get shook for a long time. Very long time. And this is, this is one of the opportunities where they're going to make this guy stay in jail. Right. because They want him to stay in jail. Like, initially, he was given, like, a $25 million bail. Right. Which is, like, what you give, like, terrorists. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They give high then bail. it was lowered to $10 million, which is still what you give terrorists. But giving him that kind of bail, you knew exactly where they were coming from with him. They didn't want him to go free. You know, he caused so much terror and problems over the years with the police department. They didn't want him back on the streets. Okay. And this was a chance now to get him. They had something to hold him on. And he's still there. He's still there. Still there. Yeah, it seems kind of crazy that someone who co-owned a company making hundreds of millions of dollars, and these albums still sell to this day. I mean, I know, I know he ended up selling the company, he went bankrupt or whatever, but like someone who has generated that much money cannot make bail. You got to understand something. These guys, they, they, they get the money and they spend it so fast. And then frivolous things like jewelry and girls and travel and it's crazy. Nobody saves up for a 401k plan or a retirement fund or, you know, get out of jail money. Nobody really has that, you know, because they buy up everything. They want to live that life. 
And people see it. You know, art imitates life. People think that that guy's got a pool and he got a bowling alley in his house, you know, inside. You know? So not everybody can have that. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very weird case. When BMF was around back in the days, because I, I, I had a case with them, uh, they were out of Atlanta. Yeah, uh, they, they flew me out. Did they? And to, to party with them one day. One yeah, they had, they had wild animals, if you remember that? I, was, like I a wasn't zoo. there for that, but they had like a zoo. I heard about it, yeah. And, and first off, <laughs> now you now you like Tony Montana and Scarface. We had the tiger in the backyard, remember that? Yeah. Now these guys were having wild animals and, and, and wildlife. Well, they had billboards in Atlanta. Yeah, uh, yeah. The world is BMFs. The world is BMFs. And, uh, you, you worked on that case? Yeah. And from the outside, not from the inside, from the outside, because the, uh, the, the, the guys that were involved were really the guys from Atlanta, from their, the police department in Atlanta. And the, the guy who was the best guy that they brought into that case was the ta- IRS guy because the taxes. I think Big Meech was, Flournoy was more concerned about Big Meech getting so much of a big profile. I think if you look at the, his thing, he says, my brother was becoming too big, too noticeable, where... Well, yeah, his, his brother Southwest T. Yeah, Southwest T. Terry Flournoy. Yeah. Yeah. Terry. Um, I heard he, he had some issues with the, the high-profile aspect of, of mm-hmm. Meech and what he was doing. And I, I hung out with these guys. You know, Meech invited me to his house. <laughs> You know, he, he was he was a smart guy too. He was pretty. He had a, Atlanta and, and that South pretty much on lock. And I think when him and Wolf had that thing, uh, yeah, that when Wolf, Atlanta, Wolf, who was Puffy's old bodyguard, got killed. Right. That was that that's was a, that was when it all unraveled. That changed the whole nightlife situation in Atlanta, where clubs had to close at two a.m. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that was that, what, that, that one that, that one incident caused the whole big ramifications in Atlanta, in the city of Atlanta. Yeah, I, I remember hearing it. I remember talking about it. Where it it caused a lot of the the the, the um, municipalities down there to say, look, yeah, these clubs were um, are not going to open past two a.m. The the town, the municipalities down there, were dead sets against it. And when this violence happened between um, Meech and, and Wolf, it, it set off a new precedent down there. Right, Wolf got killed. Wolf got killed. Meech ended up not getting charged. You walked right, away from it. Right, right, right. He didn't get charged. Right, because I remember I was at his house and we had an ankle bracelet on. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, he ended up walking away from that. But then both Meech and his brother ended up getting kingpin charges. Uh, yeah, that's true. Essentially. That's true. But from what I understand, Meech wasn't caught with any drugs. No. What they, what they got him on, too, was the tax evasion and the violence. Once the violence occurs in any organization... That's what takes you out. But but he didn't get convicted for the violence. No, no, I know that. But I'm just saying it's what leads to so that's what it them coming into... You got to remember, there's a lot of tentacles that they have, like an octopus. You can't get you on the murder, but I can get you on the conspiracy. I can get you on this, especially right. the feds. A tax evasion. I can get you on the conspiracy to commit wire fraud or drug conspiracy. Right. And from what I understand, because we, you know, one of my guys uh, interviewed uh, Meech in prison, uh, my man Cavario. And, uh, Cavario. Yeah, you know Cavario. I know Cavario very well. And uh, essentially what Meech said was... It wasn't actually me that, that, that brought me down. You know what I'm saying? I had to, I had to, it's the evidence they had on my brother, and I'm saying that, okay, well, they started it together. So that's enough to bring him in. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you got a, a, a conspiracy from 1990 to 2005, you mean to tell me it took you 15 years? To, to get enough evidence to bring to bring me down, that's unrealistic. That's correct. That's correct. Because he had ties to all these other people and other places. You're right. The brother was well, the brother talked a lot about what he did. You know, it, it, like you said, it, you know, BMF was very strong back then too. They were they were big. I was in Atlanta when they had a couple of parties. I remember they ordered liquor at a at a, a club, and I think they bought fifty nine thousand dollars worth of liquor. Yeah, and they came back and said that wasn't enough, and they think they paid another fourteen thousand. It came up to like seventy three thousand dollars. As soon as they bought that liquor, the feds came right in and they hit the owner. And the owner called me because he said, "What do I do? They just left here." And I said, "You got to report that income. If you don't, they're going to get you." And they hit him with a subpoena. You will come to court and testify. Right, because I read the book. I read the BMF book, and part of the unraveling process was that. Uh, Jacob the jeweler had sold a bunch of jewelry 
to Terry. Correct. And Terry and someone else were driving somewhere to like a young Jeezy video shoot or something like that. They were they were stopped. They found, you know, they basically seized the jewelry, maybe some cash and so forth. And uh, Jacob tried to get the jewelry back. Yeah. Even though he wasn't reporting the income. Well, Jake was involved in a lot of stuff with the rappers. You know, right. Like he was involved in a lot of things. And ultimately, that's what unraveled the Terry situation. And also, Jacob and Julie ended up going to, going to prison himself. That's correct. Over BMF. Yeah. Over yeah. basically taking funds and not reporting them. Right. What else was Jacob and Julie involved uh, in? He's involved in some other stuff. Okay. And I know of. Because he's out, he's out now. Yeah, he's out. He's been out for a while. Yeah, he has. He's got a store. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure he went right back into jewelry business. That's what he knows the best. Yeah. You know? How long did you go to prison for? Oh, that long. A couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. Still. Be on top of the world like that. Yeah, but he, I mean, he went back out to his business, you know, and, and, and that's what he knows. He's, yeah. You know? I mean, when you look at the hip-hop landscape these days and violence and so forth, do you think it's better or worse than before? I think it's a lot better. But there are those little individual crimes that occur, the shootings that happen with people uh, that gather a lot of attention. Um, you know, like I said, chinks. Um, there's still murders of other rappers that have occurred, just maybe not that, uh, not that notable, but there's still murders around the country with other rappers, you know? But, you know, I think it's slowed down because I think police departments are more in tune to this community and what goes on with it. Right. People get caught a lot more. Yeah. I mean, essentially, when you see all these murders occur, usually the person's caught within a couple of days. Most likely, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a lot more cameras these days. A lot more cameras everywhere. And everybody's watching, you know? Yeah. Everybody has video phones. You know, everybody, everybody sees, so. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Better off just to do the legal route these days. Right. That's what it is. Well, Derek, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me.